It was Scarefest in Hobblecar, and Gilbert had just gotten home with a couple of friends after watching the latest horror movie about invading beings from another world. The three friends all made their way to his living room and crashed out in their preferred chairs. Well, that was scary, Gilbert said in an exhausted exhale. He had never been a fan of scary movies. Very unbelievable, though, Crag said, pushing up his glasses to his eyes. Yeah, I mean, whoever heard of an alien like that? The writers and artists must have let their imagination run away with them, Plork offered. Actually, they apparently based it on alien abduction stories of Botty and Baney Hall, Gilmore explained. This fact seems to surprise the other two. Really? So there are uh, Veltruvians that believe this really happened? Crag asked. Yes. Though, can I ask you guys? Do you believe aliens really exist? Glibor asked. I do believe they do. This universe is too big for them not to exist. Do I believe in aliens like humans who have visited our planet? No. I think if a species is sufficiently advanced, they wouldn't bother with that. Plog replied. No, I think it's stupid to believe in aliens. There's no proof that aliens ever exist. We may be alone in the universe, Crag said, offering his opinion. Glibor, though, seemed apprehensive at those replies. He clearly wanted to say something, but was visibly reluctant. Noticing this, his two friends relaxed their body language to let their friend speak his mind. Do you believe in them, Glibby? Blork asked. I... I know for a fact they exist, Glibor finally said, after a short moment of hesitation. How can you... You don't mean you were... Crag left the unsaid question hanging in the air. Yes. I experienced an abduction myself. It's why I suggested we see that movie together. I wanted to just convince myself it was a dream. But no, it only felt scarier. Glibber was looking increasingly scared. Hey, hey, we won't judge you, buddy. Tell us what happened, Plog said in his most soothing tone. I was out on a late night stroll when... when there was a really bright light. The other two nodded. This seemed standard so far. When the light cleared, I was standing in a bright white room sitting on a table... The others nodded, and while Plork rested a comforting hand on Glibble's shoulder. It's okay, we're here for you. Well, these giant beings appeared. They had no fur except on the top of their heads. Their skin was a weird pinkish... Guys, I saw a real human! Glibble's lower lip was trembling. What did they do? Plork asked, edging closer to be ready to hug his friend should it be needed. They... They ran their hand from the top of my head down my back. They kept mumbling something in their language. Glibber accepted the offered hug. What did it sound like? Crag asked, clearly fascinated. It was a strange noise, but it sounded like... So fluffy. God puppy. Glibber shuddered, recalling the strange sounds. When did this happen? Crag asked. A few weeks ago. But I can't speak about it. People think I'm crazy. Glibber looked more and more despondent. So they only stroked your head and back? Anything else? Plork asked. They... They held out a mesmerizing orb of bright colors to me. I felt my mind lose control to it, and as they threw it, I couldn't help but chase it. Global's words matched many other reports from previous abductions. An orb the humans named Ten Is Ball. Some kind of mind control device. After that, a grey furred human. Global was cut off by Crag, holding his hand up. I thought you said they don't have fur. I meant the small fur on top of his head. But anyway, the great human walked in and seemed very angry. He shouted at the other humans. I was so terrified. But with a flash of light, I was back where I had left, and a couple of hours had gone by. Do you remember what the great furred human said? Crag asked. Glebel shuddered, as it was so scary, it had been burned into his very soul. I told you, stop petting the natives. Crab pondered the sounds before holding up a finger in realization. An invasion. He was telling them they would need to invade soon and to place you back as a mind slave to help with the invasion. Think about it. Why do they use the mind control orb? HR report from Observation Ship 1A D4697. On the 31st of October, Private Perkins and Professor Klein, under the influence of alcohol provided at the Halloween party, decided to go to the transporter and use the device on a native Paparian. The pair then proceeded to interact with the Parparian, treating it like a puppy, and playing fetch with it. Supervisor Malcolms arrived shortly after all this began, and reprimanded the pair for their impromptu puppy party. Under his supervision, they promptly returned the Parparian to where they had taken it from. The pair has been put on a week's suspension for misuse of the device. 
It is strongly recommended that we allow the crew to bring pets from Earth with them to help prevent the need to abduct uncontented alien species that, while adorable, are sapient. Please see the notes from the Kitty 5 incident.